point. So uh, we're starting uh, today uh, with uh, Marcus, uh, who, would, uh, who is uh, the uh, managing director of uh, F&F, &F, uh, which is uh, Tesco's uh, fashion, uh, fashion uh, brand. Uh, they are at the moment in uh, 12 countries, and uh, they have a plan to expand into 45 uh, countries. Um, I want to talk a little bit about F&F, &F, which is um, essentially Tesco's clothing brand. So it started off very much as a supermarket brand, and these are just some pictures of our uh, stores uh, in the UK, actually. Um, and we've eventually then opened up into some shopping malls. So we actually started off in Central Europe, in the Czech Republic, and opened our first standalone store uh, in Prague, uh, in the Palladium Shopping Centre, for those who know it, and this is the store. We then moved to the second city within uh, the Czech Republic, uh, and opened our second store. So we went from our shopping shop concept within our own supermarket uh, footage into standalone stores. And our ambition for the brand is quite bold, but we actually intend to be the world's biggest, most clearly defined, affordable fashion brand. And the affordable is really key uh, to that statement. So franchising is one of the routes that we will grow the brand significantly over the next few years. So clearly we need somebody who's got experience and some unique uh, some USPs about the market itself. Um, they've got a track record of delivering in that market, usually, but not always in the retail area. But they've actually got some, some, uh, something we can see and share. And the third point here is a little bit of a cliche, but actually they're people we can work with. There's a chemistry, there's, there's a desire to grow the business. In most of the markets that we've got our own tr our clothing brand, in most of the markets, we're the number one fashion brand by sales. And so actually what we want is a partner that actually feels they can change the market in which we're trading in. It may not be that we'll be the number one, but actually we are going to be an important brand in that market, and the partner has to share that ambition with us. So basically, um, I'm going to talk about the history of Aldo, its values, and its vision. Our group in uh, our stores in Central Asia, the former Soviet republics, and the Baltics, because I had thought that that was a focus, but I will talk very briefly about the BRIC countries and our learnings from the region. And the learnings, I'm talking very specific to Aldo, and that's the case where I say, why don't you look at what I'm saying regarding footwear, and you can maybe apply it to whatever category of product that you have. So basically, um, the Aldo Group is a privately held company. We're headquartered in Montreal, in Canada. Uh, and uh, basically there's one person who owns the company and his name is Aldo Bensadun. So there is a Mr. Aldo, there's a company called the Aldo Group, and our primary brand is the Aldo brand. We have a set of brands all in footwear. So we have a vision, it's, it's about having love, integrity, and respect, having social consciousness, we give back a lot to all communities we're in, having a people-first work environment, and that then creates what I call pride, passion, and a pioneering spirit. Once you have employees with that kind of passion and that kind of attitude, and you have a world-class retail concept, and you have professional management, you put those three together and you can have outstanding results. In Canada, the United States, and the UK, it's our own stores, and in every other country of the world, it's with a local franchise partner who has to open all of the stores. It's, no ma it's not a master franchise where someone has the right to do what they want to do once they get the rights. We're giving the rights to an Aldo for the country who has the resources and the infrastructure and the real estate connections in, uh, in order to operate the business. If someone wants to associate and be the Aldo partner in a country, they have to be great operators because that's part of the formula. But it's very hard in many of these countries to find staff that are going to be able to warm up to that DNA. And I'll give you an example. If you look at the second to last one, in many of these countries, they come from a world where there's someone who's the boss or someone who's the general who gives orders to other people. So like in our store, someone is the manager, gives orders to the staff. But that's not the Aldo approach. The Aldo approach is the team approach in the store. So we come in with our manuals, our way of doing customer service, and all of a sudden we come into markets where we can't do it. The staff are not allowed to express themselves the way, the way they are in our kind of environment. So it becomes a challenge for us on how we can incorporate our standards into the country. And this year, we will open somewhere in the world a new store every 18 hours. Remember that number. Every 18 hours, somewhere in the world, 
we will open our doors and cross our fingers that customers come across the threshold and buy from us. This represents our brand portfolio. This represents the life work of our three principals, uh, Sheikh Fawaz Abdulaziz al Hakir, his brother, Dr. Abdul Majid, and his other brother, Engineer Salman. All of them in their 40s, all of them extremely entrepreneurial, and all of them, for the past 23 years, have put their capital and their personal wealth on the line to grow a franchise business, working with partners such as Tesco, such as Aldo. We're focusing on those markets which are not brick markets, but offer, in our opinion, more lucrative growth opportunities and more return on our investment. This is a focus on the Caucasus region uh, across Central Asia, and uh, we will shortly be announcing more acquisitions in this region so that we can grow exponentially rather than organically. It's but retailing is an emotional thing, and long-term investment is an emotional thing. So if you start with the first one, a paucity of retail space, why would a retailer go where there's no retail space? Well, we go there because we build, we create, and we bring with us brands that don't currently exist. And then we take the aspiration of the consumers in that market, and we turn it into sales. On to our method of entry. We use a program called Instant Critical Mass. It's how we sell ourselves to a prospective brand partner. And what we offer them is not the chance to open one store, cross their fingers and hope that they'll be successful, but the opportunity to study a market properly, to partner with us, and then to grow very quickly. When you come to represent a brand, you have to be good at doing the boringly repetitive. You have to be world class. You have to master the mundane. We are like a retail Xerox machine. All we do is copy, copy, copy. If Norman sends it in blue, we don't ask for it in red. If Marcus sends it in black, we don't ask for it in white. We take what we're given and we replicate the brand.